Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm in Mannheim in Germany today. We're going to go and visit the city's technical museum in today's video. That big chimney you can see, or a few chimneys in a huge building, that's the city's power station. Before we visit the technical museum, I found a fantastic place you can come and look at trains. So I thought I'll show that to you first. As we come onto this bridge, you can see stretching out over there, all over there is this very, very vast railway marshalling yard, and there's also some engine sheds. In fact, there's two stations. I wouldn't even say at either end of the yard. There's one Mannheim Arena about halfway down the yard and then a couple of miles, a mile and a half that way, there's another railway station. So it is incredibly vast. These lines here, these are the high speed lines to the south of Germany. So in the past, I've traveled by train to Freiburg. I've traveled on those lines. It's interesting how far apart the two tracks are. They do get closer up there. I wonder if possibly there was going to be another fly under with um, the railway going that way. See the best view now of the power station behind us. They did have some fireless steam locos. Uh, the last reported working of them was in 2013. I did look at possibly going to have a look, but there's only about one public road bridge which crosses the site, so um, it's probably going to be a subject maybe in the future or first. If anyone knows if they still have, do you know if they've still got the fireless steam locos working? I know one of them's plinth, then do comment and tell me. She comes to here, you can see, we'll start to see a few diesel shunters. So there's the class 496 and the class 494 and there's quite a few of them shunting wagons about. What's nice is that this bridge is very open so you get a very good view down into the trains. You can just see another shunter there shunting some wagons. So it's really good from that point of view. So we can see there's a train here of say at cars. This well, it seems to be a train of all sorts like a, ooh, there goes a horn and one of the locos. So you've got behind the set of cars, you've got a couple of flat wagons and you've got some log wagons. So there's quite a lot of different types of, of freight passing through. So we're now walking over the freight lines. It's such a useful bridge and the fact that there's no, you know, I'm sure if it was in the UK, there'd be a fence about here. And you wouldn't have much chance of seeing over it. I'd be frustratingly sort of jumping, trying to see over it. But here, they've just, it's just that you can just stand and look. It's almost as if they make it enthusiast friendly. There's a... Uh, like, look, it's even a, down there. I don't know if he comes picking it out. I'll take a picture and insert it now. There's a Trabant Combi. Didn't expect to see one of those here. There's another diesel loco coming along. It's there. It's going behind the building. We should see it. If I can get to just past here, we shall get a good view. I'm just, excuse me, I'm just going to run for a second. We'll see the loco. There we go. It's 294593. Now, when we get to here, we're going to soon come to the engine shed. Well, we already get to see it. So there's quite a few different locos down there. There's a quite a vintage class 151. It's not a preserved loco, but it's one of the older electric locos. You don't see so many of them now here in Germany. The more modern locos, the Trax locos, which you do see a lot of on passenger trains and on freight. So they're always exciting to see. We've got two more shunters down there. I reckon when I walked over here, I'd already been over here. I missed that Trabant because I was so focused on the locos on shed. There's another freight just over there. So that's the city of Mannheim right over there. So we're a couple of miles away. Now again, I don't know if the camera's picking it out, but just under the bridge, you can just see a tram over there. That's the end of tram route 6 and 6A. My plan is to take a tram on either route and there's a stop for the technical museum. So I've got to go over to the railway station, catch a tram, and then that will take us closer to the city centre where we'll be able to see some interesting things in the technical museum. Anyway, I'm going to leave you with a view of the shed and the passing train. So there you go. That's one of the much more modern electric locos. Um, I'm going to have to get the new platform five because they're not in the current one. And then down there, leave you with two shunters. I'm going to walk off down those steps to the railway station. So here we are, the tram stops, the railway station there. This is the end of the tram line, so it goes on a loop around there. The tram is just waiting, so we've got to catch tram route 6A. 
as you can see, we really are right on the edge of the city, hence it being the end of the tram route. The trams go off around there, the station being called Arena, hence the name. So we, we, we need to take 6A up there, the two routes split. Route 6 goes along the bank of the Necker, and then they, they join again. So it's like a variation of the route. So I'm just going to stand here now, wait for my tram to come along, and off we go to the Technical Museum. So we've arrived at Techno Museum Sud, so that's like Technic Museum South. There's a shell of a building which says York on it. Interesting. I don't suppose anything to do with York in England or probably New York for that matter. So this is the station, or the tram stop I should say. We've come from that direction on Route 6A. Just up there, there's another tram coming, but just up there it does join with Route 6. So Route 6 runs over there. Let's just see this tram come in. An interesting thing to do with the numbering system, as I'll be able to point out, is 5615. So they, you've got really quite a big network. You've got the Mannheim system, the Ludwigshausen system, the Heidelberg system, the interurban line which links Mannheim and Heidelberg twice. I've forgotten the name, it comes up on the screen now. And there's also the Rhein Hartab lines. So you've got five systems, and they each have their own prefix number. So the five prefix that uh, means it belongs to Mannheim, two belongs to Ludwighausen, three belongs to Heidelberg, four are the interurban ones and I think one is the Reinhardt plant. Anyway, route six then is somewhere over there. If a tram could come along then we'd see exactly but it is just over there and there's also a stop for the technical museum on route six. Now you should be able to see a locomotive there, let's go and have a look at that. That's in front of the technical museum. So here's that little shunter loco which we could see from the tram stop. Let's have a look at what else there is to see. So there's this loco. Now if you have a look, it's a class 365 and it's number 715. So that's quite good to see. I think it's on a plinth. It's actually on a bit of track. Because if you look, the track is, well, it's also dual gauge for a start. So that's interesting. You can see, I'm not sure what the second gauge is. Give it a rough idea of my feet, shall we? Hmm. I'd say it's probably meter gauge is most likely. I keep saying this every video, I really should have a tape measure on me and then I could measure things. Anyway, what else have we got? We have a, a carriage here. So, yeah, again, we haven't actually gone into the museum yet. This is just what there is to see outside. We have a carriage. We have, well, this is interesting. Just spotted something not that well, something I didn't expect to see. It looks very modern. So I wonder what it's doing here in a museum. I've never seen a loco like this before. It looks fairly modern. Maybe it's one of those futuristic ones. It's actually quite old. Never seen one of these before. I'll have to look it up in my book. Or maybe it's some sort of prototype. It seems to be a class 202004, which suggests that they built more than one of them. And what else have we got? We have a, a big steam loco. Always good to see. Oh, it's a class 18 316. So, we also went to the Technical Museum at, at um, yes, yeah, Simsheim. They had one painted green and in a streamlined livery. So we have seen one of them there. So that is a class 18, so it's Pacific. Like um, Pacific is the same wheel arrangement of, say, Flying Scotsman, Clan Line, and um, the A4s, etc. So it's exciting to see. And then, oh, look, we have a narrow gauge loco. So if you look, this loco here, you can see it's sat on the narrow gauge track. So let's have a closer look at that. There's its works plate. So she was built in 1886 to works number 1167. This is a cute little loco. And then um, fit through there, and just see inside. But there's not a lot of point in me showing you through the window because all you can see you can see my reflection in the camera. We're going to go in the museum and see all that properly. But we're going to go and have a look at something else. We're going to go over, see that bridge over there? There's something I want to have a look at just over on that bridge. But I'll give you one last look at this little steam loco.
Well, there's that meter gauge steam loco, and there's that class 18. The reason I said I'd see you over at this bridge is to have a look at it. It's actually three bridges, not three bridges as in that station in Sussex. Bridge, a bridge, a bridge. Now look at this. There's a railway line here. It's an even narrower gauge than meter gauge. I would suggest, again, I'm going to do the thing with measuring with my feet. Um, I think we can probably say that's two foot. Might be two foot six, I think it's more likely to be two foot. Now this is an narrow gauge railway, runs around the park. Unfortunately, it's not running today. This seems to be a running problem with my visit. I've come here in November. Um, I've had a great time. I'm not saying I haven't, but I haven't been able to do any of the heritage lines in the area purely because none of them are running, but I've had a great time doing tram bashing and I've visited other museums. So it's not been a waste of time, but what I'll do my next visit to this area. Oh look, look, it's the, um, the uh, I don't know if you can see it over there, it's the tram that cleans the rails just over there. What I'll do, I saw it earlier on so I'll put a link on screen now, but it's a vintage tram, it's number 1302 I think. So that was over there, so that was exciting. Anyway, um, yes, yeah, so you can see, it says be careful of trains. Uh, I don't think I need to worry too much, obviously we'll check both ways. So this is the museum's field barn. I checked on their website, I, I knew it wasn't going to be running today. Um, but what I'm going to do, because I'm in a public park, I'm going to walk round and follow it, see where it goes. If I find anything interesting, then I'll point that out to you, just because, you know, we're here. But I think I'm going to have to come back next year and have a ride on this. So this is the little station here. See that field barn? So this is where you'd catch your train. I don't think they have any steam locos. I might be wrong. The thing is, if I follow the track, I should at some point come to an engine jet. And when I come to an engine shed, I may or may not be able to find any rolling stock. What I'm also going to do is, while we're here, and I think I can show you, is I said there's a tram stop on Route 6. Yeah, Route 6, because that Route 6A is over there. So I don't know where that vintage tram's disappeared to, but just over there is the tram stop. It's also where trams on the Rhine Hutard barn start. So there's a turning circle just there. We'll go over and have a look at that. So if you look over there now, should be able to see a tram just through the tree there you go so let's just have a look and then there's another tram waiting there um, and then what we'll do is i'll then go and follow the narrow gauge line to see where that goes i think it must be a circle i'm not entirely sure so as that tram disappears off on route six we can see a rhine hutard barn tram or tram forming a service of the rhine hutard barn which is quite an interesting journey. I did do that, I didn't actually make a video. As you can see, that tram is waiting just there. So the turning circle goes just over there. It's, it's hard to see on camera, I know. And then that is the museum's tram stop. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna have a look around the narrow gauge line and see where it goes. I'm quite enjoying walking along this non-operational railway. Of course, I would rather do it on a train, but you know it's quite fun just to sort of explore it at a gentler pace you can see track over there so i'm getting the impression it does do a full circuit i've been i've not actually been on a railway quite like this in germany there are i went to dresden once and i did a similar thing there's a 15 inch gauge railway around the park and it wasn't running so i walked some of the track but that one was just so vast that i simply couldn't do all of it but look at that it's just really nicely going off through the tree so i'm definitely going to come back here have a ride on it and oh and look over there there's a little diesel loco i think that's standard gauge track so we'll go over we'll follow the narrow gauge track because it looks like if it goes right round or if it doesn't we're going to go and have a look at that anyway but let's i'm now going to walk down through this really nice avenue of trees so i think i've come to as far away from the museum as the little narrow gauge railway goes it goes up quite a gradient there so i don't know if they have steam but if they did it would probably look quite good. I can almost imagine an enthusiast charter and a load of people stood here with cameras waiting to see little local come up the bank. Talking of standard gauge lines, there's another standard gauge line just there. That's one of the main lines so if we're lucky the train might get past. I'm not going to hang around and wait for one. You do get a lot of freight in this area. We found out when we were at the yard so you know you never quite know what's going to happen. So I'm just going to now follow the railway around there and I think soon we'll be at the standard gauge line that's part of the museum. So, as I said, I'm about as far away from the museum as possible. That was just around that corner. Have a look at this 
I have come to a railway station, a very small railway station, to see the points. I'm not going to play around and change them just in case they did run a train and ended up coming into the wrong track, but you can, it gives me the impression that they potentially could run two trains. So it's just making me now kind of really want to come back here and have a ride. There's even a little siding. And then, so yeah, you've got the passing loop, a siding, and as I said about a standard gauge line, well, and the diesel loco, there you go. Almost gives me the impression that they might have once, I reckon this track goes right through, and that they possibly used to do train rides, I wonder. So we've got this nice little diesel shunter, very low shunter. You see these quite a lot, or you did see them quite a lot in Germany, you quite often get them at museums. I'm not going to go up the bank. I can see the track goes down there. I wonder if it's uh, still dual gauge at this point, like it was back there. Let's see if I can see the end of the track. Oh yeah, it is. So it looks like they might have once run trains up and down here. I'm not entirely sure, but certainly interesting the idea. I've got this bit here because it's not going to move. And yeah, there we go. We're up here. See the loco now, and we can see. The number so it's class 323, not like the 323 electric multiple units get in Birmingham and Manchester 702, and then there's the dual gauge track going off there. There's also a stationary steam engine just over there. So I'm going to go back down to the narrow gauge railway and continue following it because I've just seen another set of points there, and I'm thinking one of them must go to a depot, which must be somewhere in the museum complex. So, following on from having a look at that little loco back on the narrow gauge line. There's a junction just here. Now, the track set for that way, I wonder if that means that's for the depot or for the main line, or if that is even the case. I think, looking at it, if we go along here, I'm currently on the main line, and that's the depot line. So this, this is the point where you've got two tracks running along parallel. One of them seems to disappear off down, so I'm going to continue to follow them and see what happens next. Well, we're going down quite a gradient. The main line is just there, running literally where my finger is at that level. And we're disappearing off down here. Give you an idea of how far we've dropped. We've dropped, so right down, we're going to go under this bridge. I don't know if I'm actually supposed to, but still, I'm going to have a look. If I get told, if anyone says to me to go away, I'll either tell them I'm the railway view just or I'll just go. I think it'll be all right. Oh, look, here we go. So here is a depot. There's some steps up there, so I think I'm probably all right to be down here. See how lightly laid? It's a typical field barn, very lightly laid. It's literally laid over the bricks. Now, if I have a look here, I should be able to see the rolling stock. Put my camera through there. Oh yeah, I can see something. Looks fun to sit on that wagon. Ah, oh, and then, this is what, more interesting. Oh, look, there's a diesel loco and there's some wagons. Have a look at that. So maybe they do like charters, like say the diesel would run around pulling those wagons. And I can just, I'm just looking, I'll come back and have a better look. Um, so there's always one loco, and there's these wagons which you sit on. It reminds me of the Apedale Valley Railway, the their field railway. Um, sorry, there's a thing getting away, but you can sit better like that. They have wagons a bit like that, which um, I did ride on once. If you want to see a video, have a look at the on screen now. Yeah, and then that is literally the end. So, I think we've I've satisfied my curiosity of what runs on this railway. I'm going to head back up there now, and now we're going to go and look around the museum itself. So here we are, we're inside the Technical Museum. Now, something rather funny happened. I sat down here to have a cup of tea earlier. It seemed a really nice place to sit by this locomotive, which, you know, appears to be on display in a museum. Very quiet, everything. I got the shock of my life when a moment ago it whistled and pulled off with a carriage. And I was like, what? You can have a ride on this. So I missed the ride. I did film it. So have a look at the video of the steam loco. So that was really unexpected. I'm going to have to have a ride on the next one at four o'clock. So unfortunately I won't get any shots of it outside. I have no idea 
looking at it now, I can't smell anything to suggest it's in steam. It really did give me a shock. But I'm pleased because I know I'm going to get a winning steam loco. So this is the only steam loco inside the museum. We've seen there's a few steam and diesel locos outside the museum. And um, so what they did, they, they basically shut this off. And um, then the loco came along. But looking at it now, it just looks like it's on display. And then it went off through those doors open. It reversed back in. It really was the most random thing ever. It was just like... Be like if this horse suddenly sprung to life and trotted off with this little horse tram. I don't think it's going to happen, but it's a bit like what it was. So anyway, we're, we're down on the ground floor at the moment. So see this horse tram, which is quite interesting to see. There's quite a few floors. I'm not going to show you the whole museum because there's simply so much to see. And there's a lot of interactive things you can do, which are quite fun. You can have a go at various things. It was a bit like, it reminded me of all the fun bits of science lessons when I was at school coming here today. Did So it's a very, really a very good museum and well worth a visit. What we'll do though, I'm just going to show you a couple of interesting parts of the museum. I've got to be here at four, no matter what basically, because I want to um, have my ride behind that steam hooker. I'm not going to miss that for anything. And um, when I come to, yeah, for me, getting locos for haulage is like, yeah, something that's fairly important on my list, but I really didn't expect to get anything. So I'm going to have to come here again to do the field, but I know now, next time, to hang around outside, because there's a chance I'm going to see a steam loco go by. Um, so yeah, we'll definitely come back in the future anyway. Here we are down on the ground floor. Nice selection of classic cars. And there's all, there's, it, it's got, I'd say the, Subject this technical museum covers, that's an NSU by the way, that's an Opal, is probably more vast than the technical museums we saw at Speyer and Mannheim, but there's less of the exhibits, it's not as vast, the subject covers is more vast, but the actual um, size of the museum, it's pretty big, I mean you do need all day here I'd say, but it's not as big as the... Um, Speyer one so you know if you're thinking of coming here I would allow a whole day to visit it, it, and it's very much worth it but as I said I'm gonna next visit will be when the field barn is running so you can, it's a strange building as well an interesting but strange building there's steps sort of to each floor there's lifts there's various different sort of these long walkways that take you around so it's quite um takes you a while to get your head around it I would say the other two at Sin Simon Spare were more sort of easily laid out. Anyway, come to here, there's a few more cars. Another, what time you, oh, yeah, these are both NSUs, so that's quite cool to see. Not a car that was really ever sold in Britain. Bubble car, and then the car that always makes my day, and it's the second one we've seen today, the Trabant, because we were lucky enough to see a Trabant combi earlier on. I couldn't believe it when I saw that. It was like looking at the, at the sticker on site. That whoever drove this worked at the power station and so yeah there you go there's a little Trabant the Volkswagen car there talking of power stations I think this is out of one of the power stations this machine here this is like a I think it's a generator I'm not entirely sure but it's a, big, well, it's a big steam engine that would have powered a generator it's what I understand it to be so what we'll do now oh yeah this is quite interesting you can see all the all the controls for the power station We'll go, if you have a look, it seems to be running now, but there's some water mills which are very interesting up there. So what we'll do, we'll go up to those levels, and then, as I said, I've got to be back down here for five o'clock, or four o'clock, to have my ride behind that steam loco. And it feels so strange, we're in a museum, it's everything so clean, and yet there's a steam loco running here. It really is, well, just a very nice surprise. I'm really looking forward to having my ride behind that loco. And I was making my way up one of these long corridors which goes up a slope around the corner up to another level. They, they have these and there's like a garden on the roof. There's one over the other side. It's, it's quite a fascinating place, this museum. There's just so many different levels to it all. Um, we get to here and we have, oh look, there's a, another steam engine there, a stationary one. They have lots of interactive exhibits which is quite fun. You can have a go at... Um, doing it. I don't know if I'm really going to be able to do this because I've got a camera in my hand obviously. Um, but it's like one here. Let's, let's give this one a go. So as you can see it's like a piston of a steam engine. Now if I push this, this, basically if you move 
that's this. I should fill that. So. I'll fill one side up. See the pistons moving. And then once it's there, move this to that way. And I'm pushing it that way. And if I keep doing this, Turning the wheel. I'll stop doing that because it's noisy and you can't really hear what I'm saying, but you, you get the idea. It's, um, so there's, there's lots of quite exciting things you can do here in this part of the museum, which I you know find really interesting. Well, there's, there's one other one if somebody else is here. Look, you can see some animated exhibits going on there. It's like a giant Meccano kit. Oh, yeah, this is the one I wanted to have a go with. See this thing here? We used to see these in the supermarkets when I was a child. See this thing? Get this, if you, how does it work? Um, I lift that up, I lift that up. Hard to do it when you've only got one hand. So, that's in there now, that goes down. And then what you do, you can send it with air. So, there's a big bellow here. So if I lift this bellow, it's, it's going, you can just see it going around. And as you can see, that little boy over there has just picked it up. So that's quite a fun thing you can do. So there's, lot, there's lots of interactive exhibits like that. This is all about electricity and the different things, forces you can do with electricity. So that's quite exciting. So there's really a lot to see. Oh, look, there's our steam loco down there. But I've got to be down there at four o'clock to have that ride. Last ride day. I don't know how I didn't realise. I heard the sound of whistles. I'm sort of you know, kicking myself. I was like, well, I heard a whistle, so of course it was going. Well, that's an exhibition on television, which hasn't yet opened. So I was just like, yeah, how, how did I not tweak that it was actually doing rides? I think I just did not expect it. Um, I'm really excited about getting that ride. So I might better not get too carried away with making the video. This part of the museum shows as if the, like a locomotive works. So you can see a boiler down there, like it's under construction. Directly above me is the carriage which we'll ride in. So it is all one piece of track, as I said earlier, as I, or as I thought earlier. One long line, literally one long dual gauge line, runs in and out the museum. So that's down there. Oh yeah, look, it's a little cool model of a steam generating engine. I think if I press this button, it'll go. Yeah, look. So that's that's quite interesting. Yeah. So if you look out there. You can see that class 18 Pacific in the little narrow gauge loco. So yeah, there's our carriage. My, my carriage awaits for my, um, my steam hauled ride. That's an overhead crane. You don't often see them at this level. There's one more thing I want to show you before I have my ride. So as we come out here, and you can see the, through the window, that, what I think must be a meter gauge steam loco. Out there is the field barn, those three bridges. So the battle, where does this go? Oh, this takes us to the entrance. So yeah, get a nice view of the of the Pacific out there. So there, like I said, there's just so many different things to see here. Um, I didn't actually want to come down here because I'm trying to get to another level too. I'm going to find my way up to the next level and I'll show you that when I get there. Here we are on the next level. There's a load of sewing machines. So to give you an idea of where we were a moment ago, have a look. That's that animated, those animated models we can see. See that one working just there. Have a look at this though, here is a mill in action. That's great to see a water wheel turning. And it would have of course powered all of this machinery which would ground the corn down. Mills were used for various different things. Is this one? This is a linen mill. Not working, anyway. Let's try another exhibit. So look, you can see loads of, just there, there's loads of uh, looms and everything now. For water wheels, that water wheel, well there's two types, you get undershot and overshot. So that's an undershot water wheel. This is an overshot water wheel. The way to see how they work is we press this button. And hopefully, yeah look, there's a load of water coming. You can see water is starting to come down. There we go, look, and see the overshot wheel is springing into action and so is the undershot one. And it shows you how much so that how much they're generating, I think. So at the moment, the overshot one is generating more than the undershot one. But the, oh no, the, the undershot one is taken over now. That's making more. So that's really quite fascinating to see. So talking of undershot water wheels, there is one down here. Have a look at this though, it is a mill. 
and you can see okay the the loop the um yeah the looms aren't running but all the machinery all these belts are turning so that's really quite fascinating to see it's a bit reminds me a bit of quarry bank mill in the uk near manchester and that is powered by well it doesn't appear to be turning at the moment but an undershot water wheel and then there i think this is another water powered machine looking at the diagram so i think the water would have flown through there to power that machine. I'm going to go downstairs now and get my ride on that steam train. So here I am at the Bahnhof. This is the most unusual railway station I've ever been to. I don't think I've ever been to one quite like it. And as I said, the, main, the loco seems to be giving no indication. It's in steam there, it's there. So here's my carriage. So I'm just, it's still about 15 minutes till it goes, but I just like, I just want to be on it. So I'm just going to wait here until it's time for me to get my ride on. A very short bit of track, but very ex um, unexpected and exciting little railway that I'm going to travel on. So I really, really can't wait for this ride. So the moment has arrived. I am now on the train. We're just waiting to go. I found out a bit of information. I've been talking to a driver. He tells me it's fireless. So the steam is created down below and then it's pumped up to the steam loco. So that's why. So although it looks like it wasn't originally a fireless loco, it currently is now. So hence the reason there was no noise or anything. Anyway, we're going to go now, so I'm really excited about that. So we're at the end of that railway line which we saw when we were walking around outside on the field bone. We're now going to make our way back into the museums. So this has got to be one of the most unusual and most unexpected train rides I've ever been on. But I'm really happy you know, that I was able to get this really unexpected experience. It just you know, went from being what I thought was a static exhibit to something that gives you a little ride. So yeah, I'm really, really made my day that has. So the driver's got off. I think my winning loco of the day I might be just about to get two winning locos of the day because I think, because it's a large ride, that diesel, which you might be able to see there, it looked like he was coupling it up. So he's either going to drag the diesel back in or the diesel's being fired up. So if he fires up the diesel, I've then had 
two locos for haulage. I'm not quite sure what's going on. The driver's got out. I'm tempted to jump out and get a picture, but then if the train went, it's not really, as you can see, we are literally on the edge of an embankment, so I probably shouldn't just get out, just stand on the steps. But as we saw earlier, this is the end of the line. So I'm really not sure what's going on. Of course, there's also the main line over there, so we might... If I was going past on the main line train, I would be like, what? There's a steam engine? I'd, you know, I'd be desperate to come and find out. Anyway, let's wait and see what happens. This very, very short train ride has just become even more mysterious than ever. So we're just going back now. It appears we're just dragging the diesel back, so I can't count the diesel as a winner even though I've had it in consist of a train. So one day I'm going to have to come here, be on a separate visit to Germany now, because this is my penultimate day. But I'll have to be here about four o'clock and film all this from outside, because this is quite a fascinating little operation. I'm going to flip the camera around. You can see forward back into the museum. You'll see what short distance we've really travelled. That was all rather a bit of a big, exciting surprise. One more whistle from the steam loco. So after our ride, she had to then shunt the diesel loco, the carriage and the other wagon into the depot. So it's, it's all on, it's like, it's just, uh, yeah, it's just such a funny railway. See, there's level crossing gates. It just feels so surreal that we're inside a building. You've got a steam engine going up and down on this railway, which has no points. It's just one long bit of track. It has station down there, depot in the middle, takes you outside. It's a very short ride, but it's also one of the best rides I've ever had. It's just so, I don't know, just really exciting. I think because it was so unexpected. It's, it just sort of shows you don't need a long, long uh, ride for it to be a good ride. So that, that was really, really good. I really enjoyed that. So if you're in Mannheim, you've really got to come and see this place. Um, just a couple of other things I want to show you before I finish the video. Here we have like, the appearance of a car factory. So you see a car under construction, more vintage cars. And I'm just going to finish off with something else. Well, I'll just one other thing there. That's quite cool, that um, bit bus or a campan. Anyway, the, the thing I want to finish off with, and I really want to make a video on one one day, because I think they're one of the, the most exciting, coolest things ever invented bit dangerous and um, that's probably why I haven't ever featured one in a video before. Have a look at this. It doesn't look that exciting at first glance but it's if I step back you may have an idea what it is. It's a paternoster lift. Now okay this one isn't working. For those of you who don't know what a paternoster lift is, it's a continuous lift. So that one would be going up, that one will be going down and what would happen is you'd have to require a leap of faith to jump in and have a ride. So what would happen is you can actually stay in it and you can ride right over the top. I don't think you're supposed to, but you can. You can ride right up there, over the top, and you can stay in it and go down. It's called, if you go to the top, it's called overriding and underriding. So you basically you, you jump in, when you get to the next floor or before you want, you jump out. And the reason it's called a paternoster lift, paternoster are the first words of the Lord's Prayer, it's because you require a leap of faith to get in. Now, I did go in one in Cologne a few years ago. I found a public building with one in operation. 
and it goes quite fast. It's, it's actually quite scary getting into them. The only place I've seen one in the UK is Norfolk Park Hospital. Now, I've been in the hospital a few times purely to look at the lift. I've never, ever seen it operational, and it is only for staff, although I was tempted to try and sneak in somehow and have a ride. Um, I really want to make a video, though, one day on a paternoster lift. There's a few universities. I believe the Arts Town Sheffield University has a paternoster lift. I think possibly... Leicester University and maybe there might be one in the University of Essex in Colchester but I really I really want to have a go in one and make a video because I think they're fascinating things so it's also made my day to see a paternoster to lift here even if it's not a working one so I think that's quite a fascinating subject to finish the video on something that certainly belongs in a technical museum so I really hope you enjoyed this video from the technical museum in Mannheim it's been full of surprises for me as I made this video it sometimes shows you you know unplanned days out well i plan to come here can be some of the best because i've just seen all these things un unexpected steam engines that you think are static that suddenly come to life pattern the lifts saw we saw the trabant that's parked over there and then we saw the other one um which was in the depot i'm going to finish with one other thing just a short model railway i think if i press this button it should go no maybe this button there we go let's go around the other side this is one other thing i was just going to tell you about to finish. See this locomotive here? It's called a rabbit. I don't know how obvious it is on here, but its exhaust pipes look like rabbit ears. So from the Mannheim Technical Museum, I hope you enjoyed this. Do come and visit them. I've really had a fantastic day. So thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to like, subscribe and comment. Goodbye.